In the 1800s, almost all university teaching took place in St Salvatore's Quad. Now home to five lecture theatres and multiple seminar rooms, the Quad continues to be the venue for many lectures and tutorials today, but mainly in the humanities. With popular new subjects such as computer science coming in and the student population expanding, the university was pushed to build more buildings for teaching, and this resulted in many departments moving out of the Quad. These new buildings and the equipment which came with them as well as the employment of more staff, also led to a change in the way these subjects are taught and examined. St Andrews University has seen major growth in the past 200 years. In 1876, there was only 130 students in the entire university and threats of closure led to rallying of friends and support. Professors were few and far between, with assistants often conducting classes as a result of professors' ill health or other issues. In fact, academic staff numbers were still relatively low until as recently as the 21st century. In 1985, there were only about 45 professors in the entire university, compared to today, where in 2020 to 2021, there were 235, according to the Higher Education Statistics Agency. The student timetable in the 1800s was very different to one that you might see today. Students would study a rotation of Latin, Greek, logic, mathematics, moral philosophy, and natural philosophy which is equivalent to physics today. This would be over the four years of their degree in the arts curriculum. Looking at the class schedule from 1805 tells us that students didn't have it easy. They had compulsory classes in Latin on a Saturday morning at 11 a.m. as well as 9 a.m. classes in mathematics. Second year was reportedly the hardest year as William MacDonald, a student who matriculated in 1868, only age 16, recalls in his reminiscences. He writes, Our second year was our hardest. The normal course was to take senior Latin, Greek and mathematics with logic. He also notes that the lack of an entrance examination meant that some students found this fixed curriculum too easy, recalling that those, like myself, who had gone through a course of education in a good secondary school were to some extent marking time in the junior Latin, Greek and mathematics classes. However, some people did find their studies challenging, as at least 10% of marks were needed to gain credit for the first four compulsory years, and students were said to be anxious to gain their class certificate, referring to passing as catching the 10. New subjects soon started appearing in the curriculum, including science subjects, which were gradually added with the addition of chemistry in 1826. Refurbishments in the quad in the mid 19th century provided chemistry with a proper lecture theory to discuss content, an additional small room used as a laboratory, preparation room, research room and store. However, these facilities were small, students didn't get to experiment themselves and were expected to learn by watching practical demonstrations. James Stewart, a student in 1838, recalls this in his reminiscence, saying, We never had the opportunity, either here or in the class of natural philosophy, of doing any experiment or indeed handling any equipment ourselves. In 1882, University College Dundee was founded as a constituent college of the university after an 1878 commission recommended a college should be established in Dundee to teach medicine, mathematical, physical and natural sciences. The goal was to incorporate this college into St Andrews, creating more space for the teaching of these subjects and making equipment more accessible. In St Andrews, mathematics was housed in the quad, with the main classroom on the east side and it's the door about halfway along there which yep. you went in you went upstairs and and there was a mathematics classroom and a number of other classrooms which were used by various departments but there was one big classroom which was the mathematics classroom which was reserved for mathematics the library was up there um and uh copson and Dan Rutherford had offices up there. Other staff had offices on the North Street and offices where Ganicky is now. These buildings weren't designed for academic use. The houses that had about uh, five rooms, four or five rooms. And one of them, I can't remember which, but had a bath. We were always used to laugh. Science and mathematics were underfunded, especially in the early 20th century and in a memo to the University Court from the Dean of the Faculty of Arts in May 1924, we can see that both mathematics and natural philosophy were eager to get new equipment, such as models and workshop tools, which would have been costly. 
More staff were also needed as the goal was to develop a mathematical laboratory for an elementary teaching in statistical work and to provide a satisfactory course in applied mathematics. In 1967, the university separated from Dindi after 85 years of working closely together. Before this separation, in 1961, a scheme was accepted by the university to create a series of new buildings to house physics, maths, chemistry and geology, as well as halls to accommodate up to a thousand students. There were intense debates as the site for the new development called the North Hall was chosen. The, the original plan for the buildings on the North Hall was to have smaller sort of mathematics, physics, chemistry and, and a big common lecture block so that they would all share the same lecturing facilities. So, uh, and, and there were, well, there's a lot of sense in that in a way uh, for, for better use of facilities. But uh, all of the professors, uh, very much empire builders, weren't keen on that and they all wanted their hands on their own sort of lecture theatres. So I think that's, that's how we came to get sort of separate physics, separate chemistry, separate uh, mathematics buildings. Class sizes were expanding and an inevitable separation from Dundee meant that the move to the North Hall was absolutely needed. For example, from Edward Copson's records, we note that in the first year mathematics class in 1951, there were 68 students, whereas in 1961, 10 years later, there were 98 students and numbers seemed to increase year upon year. In fact, Copson played a big part in the building of the new mathematical institute on the North Hall, with the name and design being down to him. And I remember Professor Copson, who was the uh, professor of mathematics when I was there first, but he was helped put up the curtains in the mathematical institute. Copson was presented with a spade after the cutting of the first sword in 1965. This spade is still around in the mathematical institute today and is pictured along with its plaque, which is tarnished now, but still readable. His office is still pretty much the same as it was then today, apart from the removal of a door which used to link it to Pat Dunn, his secretary's office. The move to the North Hall in general was very exciting, as scientists and mathematicians had their own buildings for the first time entirely dedicated to their work. The physics block was completed in 1965, followed by the maths block in 1966, and the chemistry block in 1967. Although these buildings have changed over the years, much remains the same. There are still a few notable changes if we take the maths building as an example. Much of the once open space in the building has been turned into offices to accommodate for an increased number of staff and PhD students over the years. At the bottom of the building, where the tutorial rooms are today, there was a numerical analysis laboratory which disappeared. Additionally, there was a specialist library on the third level, with a librarian's office, which now mainly houses academic staff members' offices, but also a few books. The computing classroom, as we know it today, is a false floor, and was originally joined to Lecture Theatre A, housing the school's largest two-storey lecture theatre at the time. Uh, the, the pond in the middle was to cool the possible computer. These rooms serve different purposes now, highlighting that the university is continuing to change today as research moves forward and the student body continues to expand.